It's hard to imagine our lives before electricity, but just like some of the biggest companies of today, Thomas Edison's electric company was once just a startup. Man, I wish I'd invested. And what came out of its humble beginnings has gone on to illuminate the world. Seriously, if I'd just put five bucks in, I'd be a gazillionaire today. When it comes to technology and innovation, sometimes special things happen when stars align. The right place, the right time, the right people. This is Edison Illuminating. This is a power station. We generate electricity here. I guess electricity has to come from some It's got to start someplace. <laughs> this is the place. Mark Gruther is chief curator at the Henry Ford, and he explains how this structure houses a collection of items from various Edison Illuminating buildings. Edison Illuminating Company was established by Thomas Edison in 1880 in New York City, and soon after it expanded to other parts of the United States. Edison, as you remember, was the inventor of the light bulb, the phonograph, and much more. It looks amazing, and yet I have no idea what it is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a jumbo dynamo, the only jumbo dynamo. A this, dynamo? A dynamo, it's a generator. This generates electricity. It's the only survivor of the generators that were installed in Pearl Street in New York in 1882. Pearl Street was the site of the first central generating station that Edison built in, uh, in Manhattan. Essentially, that's where Edison delivered the promise that he'd made, that he would be able to light a major city with a centrally distributed electrical system that could light buildings and power equipment. In the early 1890s, there was a fire on Pearl Street that severely damaged the station. And this is the only surviving workable dynamo from the plant. While Thomas Edison was busy illuminating cities, a man 16 years his junior was working as an employee at the Edison Illuminating Company in Detroit. His name was Henry Ford, and he would soon become chief engineer before going on to start his own automotive company. It's actually the last period when Ford works for anybody. He's on an essentially 24-hour call, which might sound onerous to some people, but I think to Henry Ford was a really good thing. Do we know if while working at the power station, he was thinking about what would become the car. We know for sure that he was building that first car. So one of the great advantages of the 24-hour on-call thing is actually he can be home doing stuff so long as they can reach him. When does he finally meet Thomas Edison? In, in the summer of 1896, he goes with the, uh, the company's general manager and the company's attorney in New York. And he meets Thomas Edison at the Oriental Hotel in August of 1896. And how does that meeting go? It actually goes quite well. He actually ends up sitting right next to Edison, describing, kind of drawing what he's doing. Um, Edison hears him out, likes what he hears, and says, you know, that's a really good way of doing it. Keep at it. Within a few years, Ford left the Edison Illuminating Company and started on automotive ventures, which finally led in 1903 to the founding of the Ford Motor Company. And in time, the acquaintances became friends. Do they have sort of a father-son relationship? Ford always deferred to Edison. He was older than Ford to the point where Ford was never going to behave in a way that they were equals in that regard. I think there's always a kind of mentor, kind of admirer relationship, but the, the, the really is mutual. They didn't work side by side here, but Not, they did share something in common. Absolutely, so their sensibilities are very similar. Um, this is a methodical, orderly, sort of systems-based environment. That kind of thing was fundamental to Edison's thinking. It was also fundamental to Ford's thinking. And it was the foundation for the empires that would be built by two common men who showed uncommon passion, determination, and discipline.